you play viewers. I'm feeling a lot more energetic than I did yesterday because I quit a lot earlier than I did, uh, did yesterday. Hi Jen, good to see you pop in. So here we are in the easternmost town in the United States, Cutler, Maine. And hi Robin. And it looks like a nice day here, doesn't it? But if I turn to the right and we look out toward the Bay of Fundy, guess what's out there waiting for everybody? Yes, you're very astute, gentle viewers. There's plenty of fog for everybody. And I'll be happy to send some to you if you just send me $10 in the mail. Hi up. So <clears throat> today was a, a all, all in the fog. I had to go to Eastport to do customs which was travel in the wrong direction except for legal purposes and I think I was about <clears throat> 30 seconds away from actually hitting the dock before I could see it and I was going slow too so uh, I took care of that when I walked up to the grocery store had a really amazing uh, event happen on the way back my feet were tired and I was almost almost back to the boat <clears throat> and a woman who was about to drive away said, would you like to have a ride back? And I said, yes, even though I could almost see where I was going. But we had a little conversation, and, and I learned a lot about, about her, her old boat and how they gave it up. So that was pretty cool to get a free ride. That doesn't happen too often. So the other thing that's very interesting here, it's the middle of the afternoon, and look at all these lobster boats. They should be out. They should be out working. But it looks like every single boat is here. So I kind of wonder why they aren't getting lobsters. Now you say, oh, what about this spot? Well, lucky me, often it's often the case that there's one boat in this harbor that, that's uh, out of commission for some reason. And so they're off their mooring, and this one here, this is the joy of, I don't drop anything, the joy of finding an empty mooring. So if you want your salad for tonight, I've had to use my own line to, to put through this. This, this huge line is too fat to, uh, to fit into my, onto my boat. And then look at all this growth, all this kelp going back, so you know you know this mooring has not been used for a considerable period of time so lucky me i got got one near the end i haven't really looked around i only needed one so i haven't been up here to, up up here to look around and do you see any other empty ones uh i think i see another empty one over there but Sometimes they don't have a rope. So, lucky me, this one has a rope. And I did back up on it a little bit and gave it a little bit of a pull because you never know if they're going to, uh, to give away or not. But I didn't pull it too hard, so hopefully there's no heavy wind in thunderstorms today. And uh, all is well. I have to watch out, I'm stepping on a minefield of a storm. Oh my goodness, poor Robin's getting a storm. So it's a very pretty town. I haven't been on shore for, for years. Usually I just stop and, uh, and spend the night and then they move on. And now I have a little comp complication is my dinghy is here. I've lashed it to the deck for my, my trip down the coast, which I think if I pull it, I think I go slower because of uh, the extra drag. I was meaning to test that in Canada when I was in one of the lakes, but it was never a perfect day with no wind. So I never got to test test what would happen if I set my engine to a certain speed and, and let the dinghy go. So you have to test that where there's no wind and no current, which is a, a hard combination to find. Around here there's always there's tide, so there's always some kind of a current running. Hmm. But I've been over here before, and it's a sweet little place. Uh, but you'll notice it's low about, about low tide right now. 
I think the tide today is about 18 feet. So over here at this lobster wharf. Now I've been here at low tide. If you want to uh, visit shore at that lobster wharf, you can land your dinghy, but then you've got to climb a considerable distance. So it's not for the, for the faint hearted. And then over here, you can land your dinghy on this boat ramp but you've got to pay attention because either your dinghy's going to be stranded if the tide's going out or or it's going to uh, float away if the tide's coming in so yeah it's really pretty here all these little old homes i didn't have enough time when i was in eastport hello from pittsburgh welcome to the easternmost town in the country in in the at least the continental uh, United States. Uh, there is Eastport, which is a city, and I think that might be a little more to the west than where I am now. So I am surprised the lobster boats aren't, uh, aren't out. I did see a few traps as I was coming along, but not, not nearly the, the large amount that I've seen in, in other years. Yes, yeah, very pretty here. Um, the stressful see what you don't see is it's stressful coming going it's, it's stressful coming along because once i got into the united states i had to watch out for for uh, lobster pots and floats and things that could catch onto the propeller and then coming in here you can see well you maybe could have seen earlier there's an island there covered in the fog and i had to go between the island and there's a little red buoy down there somewhere I have the red buoy on, on my GPS and the radar was running. And one thing I tried to do, which didn't seem to work, was if you click the radio five times on a certain channel, um, it should turn on the fog signal, but it didn't seem to do that. Uh, does anyone stay on that island? I think someone's there now because I can see a boat at the boat ramp. The only thing on that island, though, is the, uh, the lighthouse. Now, I don't know if that, sometimes lighthouses, oh, you can't see anything zoomed in. Sometimes lighthouses are private. I think this is a private lighthouse now. The uh, government sold off a lot of lighthouses because they didn't have any money to uh, maintain them. They do have money to keep the light running. Um, yeah, the, uh, a, lot of, a lot of fog signals in Maine and, and around the country have been automated to, to take a radio signal. So I think this lighthouse was restored by the locals so the light comes on now we haven't heard from me in forever because I was up in Canada with uh, very limited internet so yesterday I had a signal today I'm, I'm in the United States with even more of a signal so I can I can do a few few scopes can walk around to the other side so you can just see this this fog I hope you don't have much wind noise. I put the microphone on and I put my jacket on and covered it up. But you can just see this fog blowing over the hills and descending down toward the water. There's a, a big temperature differential. The uh, water off to my left is 52 degrees. So this moist air hits, hits that and kapow, instant fog. So hopefully there's a front coming through and uh, I'm scrolling the wrong way. Yeah, cool enough for a jacket. Well, no, it was it was today. Oh, I've been in the fog for two days. It's uh, it's a bit brutal because I have to be even that more attentive. But I do have uh, I had the radar going, and and even better now is is there's a. A device you can install on your on your boat that transmits your position so I, I both have a transmitter and a receiver so I can uh, send out messages saying here I am and I also can see other people who are sending out messages saying here I am which is really helpful um, so I saw two fishing boats coming at me today uh, electronically before I even picked them up on radar so I knew what they were I could see their track I could see their course I could check and see how big they were. I knew their names if I had to call them. 
So I made a course change and, and avoided it. One was headed right at me. So I made a course change and, and missed him. It's an A A I S. You know, you know, you're pretty good, pretty good about those things. A I S. So if you're interested in in looking up uh, a boat, as long as it's near, so so the idea is the boats can talk, so they can see each other. But people on land have set up base stations to receive the same uh, signals the boats are sending, and then they they put them on the, uh, the internet. So you can go off to uh, marinetraffic.com and there's a whole bunch of other websites, but that's, that's a big one. And look around your, your area if you happen to be near the coast or look around whatever places of, of, of interest or if you know a certain boat, you can put the boat name in. So I checked on my boat and I went out of range of the nearest coastal station uh, hours ago. So I'm not, my current position is, is, is incorrect. Um, but that's all right. For purposes of navigation and safety, it did what it had to do. And then I pulled the plug. There's this, this AIS doesn't have an off switch. That's one of the things I'm going to do. Here comes a truck loaded up with what? I did replace the, very good memory, I did replace the small sail with the bigger one. And just the other day, uh, oh, Scott, did you pay money for the uh, marine traffic app? It cost about $6. So I did replace my little sail. This is the, uh, this is always a little sail. That's the, uh, the cutter sail. So I placed the, the small Yankee jib with this, this monster. And I had it out the other day. And I think I was going four and a half knots in ten knots of apparent wind. I was more or less going downwind. So that's a pretty good speed. I was happy with that. Um, and then I was done with my, my little trip and I rolled the sail up. And I was still going two and a half knots because of all this, uh, all this stuff behind on the back of the boat. The sail cover, the, uh, the spray hood there, the solar panels. They all add up to a bit of uh, friction, so I was getting pushed along even with no sail out. <laughs> Had a good, so I think this boat's pretty slippery. But then uh, the next day, I put the sail out, just the jib, and sailed back, and was uh, was doing about the same speed in in slightly stronger wind. So that was that was fun. Just let it go. It was nice and I really don't want to run the motor if I don't have to. So I need to find out from somebody what the story is with lobstering. So obviously all these boats are not not active. Something something is different this year. Hopefully it's going to clear out uh, tonight, tomorrow morning, and I'll get out of here after 12. So the trouble in this area is I'm still in the Bay of Fundy. Bay of Fundy's out there, and the current runs really fast because of the, uh, the extreme tides. Well, normally I can motor this boat at six and a half knots, and today I was doing 9.2. So that's about three and a half knots of uh, a current boost. So you don't want to go out in the Bay of Fundy and have the tide against you. So tomorrow after 12-ish, I think the current changes at uh, like 12.20. In the afternoon, oh, the wind is really howling now. I'm glad I quit when I did. Let me turn myself away from that. So tomorrow afternoon, the tide becomes favorable, and then I can get somewhere. And for the first few hours, I'll have a, a push. So I don't know where I'll get in uh, in six hours. We'll have to see. I'm gonna walk back. So there you go, there's a little view of uh, a very rustic Cutler, Maine. I don't think they have a grocery store anymore. They do have a post office. They do have a library. And they have a lot of unemployed lobstermen right now, which is a bit sad. It also means the, uh, the places that, 
that take the lobsters when the boats come in are uh, on hard times as well. There's two here. I showed you the one nearby. That's the one I've climbed up that, that ladder a number of times. There's another one up at, at the head of the harbor too. Whoop! Zoom too much. You can learn a 35 footer. Oh yeah, tiller steering is very nice. You have the, the feel of it and you much more responsive. So good good for you. Where, where are you sailing? I think you might have told me once, but I probably I must have forgot. So the uh, normally this time of the day the lobster boats would be coming in. They start early in the morning normally and they'd be coming into one of those two places and tying up and then they use a they use a a little crane thing to, to pull the lobsters up in their buckets and they get weighed and the the people get credit on their account and in these shacks in that shack with the open door normally there's a whole bunch of uh, of stinky bait buckets Lake Michigan that's right I remember you were doing uh, doing the Great Lakes and that's pretty amazing and that's not an easy place to go um, so there's a bunch of stinky bait buckets in that shack so when you need to uh, to bait your traps you you buy a supply of, of bait from them and put the, the bait in little bags that then go into the, the traps and then down they go when you drop them over the side. So that's the end of this scope. Who knows where I'll be uh, tomorrow. I'll have to see if I have much of a signal, but I was happy to uh, to be able to show you this, this, this sweet spot and the fog blowing in. Oh, Julie, you just missed me. I'm scoping out. You'll have to watch the replay. So everybody, uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.